Hello and welcome back to the channel, my rangers. This is David with Fairmare's Rangers, and yes, I'm doing a tier list for the units of Austria. So I think this is pretty self explanatory. So let's just kind of dive into this, and we're going to kind of discuss each unit and kind of place them here between elite, superior, regular, militia, and citizens. Now, we're going to start off with the artillery, and we're going to start off with puckle guns, and I'm just going to place them as citizens. Now, the reason I'm going to list them so low in this tier list is because the reload is pretty, pretty sad, and as soon as enemy rifles can get in range or any other unit they're pretty much going to get wiped out as they're going to be a focal uh, target for any enemy units so it doesn't really last long it doesn't get the kills you expect if you want to get any effectiveness out of it you have to overrange it by clicking the ground and you're just not going to get heaps of kills out of it so that's why I'm going to list puckle guns so low now you're going to also notice I'm not going to have rockets or mortars on here as I list them pretty low as well. Number one, I list mortars uh, so low because I just don't think you get the enjoyment of the battle using them. I think they're a unit that's too overpowered in the game and rockets are just so terribly miserable that they're they're lower than citizens. They're they're like dead citizens if you will so that's why i list them so low now as far as the other artillery if i'm only going to list the 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 later advanced ones of these because i, I don't want to be too redundant on them so in other words we're going to use the the six pound horse artillery instead of the three pound i don't want to put both of them on here so i think you follow my meaning so let's go into the howitzer, and I am going to list that unit as superior. Now, the reason I would list that one as superior, because it has the ability to arc over any terrain features and lob artillery over your own infantry's head. So it's a really great offensive weapon, and it can be used extremely effectively, especially using quicklime on enemy units. And again, it's a really great offensive weapon, albeit a slow moving one, uh, but it is a great offensive weapon. Now, on the list, I would list your 24 pound artillery as regular. And I know that people love using that unit because of canister shot. And but it's pretty much going to be a more of a defensive uh, unit, so it's limited in that because it, it doesn't give you that offensive capability um, that the uh, elite need to have, in my opinion. Now, I know it's the same movement speed as the Houtzer, but Again, with the straight line, you have to keep it in tandem with your infantry. Otherwise, you end up giving yourself friendly fire. So that's one of the reasons. Now, if we're going to horse art, I would list that one as superior because it does give you that mobility and speed to be able to push it ahead of your infantry, dropping it, laying down uh, far, fire in advance, and also giving you a good defensive weapon as well. So that's why I list it there. Now, we're going to talk about some cav here. Now, obviously, Austria has um, a, a decent selection of cav, I would say. And in that cav, they have, of course, their, um, their guard cav. And this cav, if I was to list this as far as anything I like, I would, I would just list it as regular. And... It's a, it's a good heavy cav, but the problem with heavy cav is it's slow moving and it's easy to be shot down. Even if you're going to be charging the back, enemy units can easily shoot it down. And being only 45 men, they don't end up lasting long. 
Now, if you use them effectively, yes, they can be used very well. But heavy cav, the cuirassiers, the the um, uh, the guard cav, I would list all of those as regulars. They do have an effectiveness. They have great shock in their um, charge bonuses. Um, so I would list them as regular. Now, with the other cav. Um, of course, you, you are able to recruit um, the Militia Cav, and I would rank that as Militia. I wouldn't rank it as low as Citizen, and the reason being is because this unit can have a lot of effectiveness when you are using it versus the Ottomans, uh, especially early campaign. In the early campaign, this unit can be extremely effective as the Ottomans do not get Cav they can't recruit cav. They only come with one deli cav at the beginning of the campaign. So this militia cav can be quite effective against the Ottomans and their infantry only units. So that's why I'm going to list it as militia and not lower. Now, of course, as we get into the ability to re uh, recruit your uh, Hungarian hussars, that becomes a nice effective light cav unit and i'd list that as regular um, the reason i list it as regular is because it is kind of an expensive unit uh, for a hussar unit and the morale is fairly low on it for being a special unit and that's why i'm going to list that one as regular and i don't think i need to go on that one for too long now as we get into the other you get carabiners now this is going to be a good stop gap cav for you uh, before you get a little bit better advanced cav and I'll go into that in better detail in a minute but the carabiners are going to be a great range cav I'd I would actually rank them slightly less than the hussar uh, simply because they do give you that range ability but the hussars give you a little bit better impact the Hungarian hussars that is now, as we get into the final three cav units, you get the Ulans for the Austrians. I would actually rank that as an elite unit. Now, the reason being is because it has just absolutely great shock in the fact that with the Ulan, you are going to be getting just tremendous charge bonus out of this unit with 29 i mean it's just absolutely bonkers versus other ulans or lancers they only get 25 the austrians get 29 and they actually get eight morale so this is a absolutely fabulous unit the nine attack nine defense i don't know what it is why the austrians got a much better lancer cap than the other nations but uh there you go they they got one better than polish and one better than the french or the prussians so yeah there you go so i list that one as an elite cav unit then we go to the light dragoons also i would list this as an elite unit you can't compare with the light dragoons ability to reap reap devastation upon its enemies with the 50 percent accuracy 25 reload skill the ability to dismount them keep them mounted the mobility factor the morale is low with six but even with that low morale it is a highly advanced unit that can just leap reap devastation upon your enemies with the with a mass volleying uh, that it has where all the all the men in the unit shoot at once it can really cause major problems now the last unit in the cav i would list as an elite unit for them which is the general bodyguard and the reason is for austria this is a super important unit it can't be stressed enough because austria is a very low morale nation so this general's bodyguard for the Austrians is massively important. You must keep a general bodyguard with them. And the reason being, again, you're going to have a lot of low morale units with Austria. 
And we will start talking about that with the infantry as we go into it. Of course, they're going to have the standard militia that all other nations get. And we'll put that in the militia category, obviously, as it is a militia unit. And I don't think we really need to discuss too much about the militia. I mean, it, it's an effective unit. It's a stopgap unit. And it can be used in tandem with your other units in the Austrian army effectively if you use it correctly. Um, you definitely should always have some lower tier units in each of your army stacks to prevent damage from your better quality units um, just as you would in any army now early campaign you get pikemen and pikemen have their effectiveness um, at the early campaign but it kind of wears thin i'm kind of on the verge of should we put them as a citizen or a militia but i think the fact that they have seven morale and can be a good stopgap unit until you get to your line infantries and so forth as being a fairly good unit to have now as we get into the austrian line infantry the austrian line infantry i'm actually going to list them as a militia because they are not much better my my friends the austrian line infantry is one of the worst it is probably the worst line infantry you can get in the game as you can see here it has only 35% accuracy, which is on par with the Russians for the worst of all the nations for accuracy. Reloading skill is second only to the Russians for being the worst in reloading skill. And ammunition, of course, is going to be the same across the board, so there's not much to say there. But in melee, they're gone to a new low in in the lows of the world and they only get a five melee attack versus everyone else has six and then your better ones with france and russia have eight charge bonuses eight which is the worst in the game as well for line infantry defense is 11 which is tied with russia for the worst in melee defense and the morale is six which is the worst in the game and yeah, for those reasons, okay, I know a lot of people say, yeah, but they get 150 men if you uh, look at that, or 200 in the ultra size units. So they do have more men, but you're not getting a decent unit out of that more men. Le more is not always um, better quality is sometimes more than the unit size, if you catch my meaning. I think I screwed up that thing. Okay, so as far as regular infantry go, then we come to the guards. Now, Austrian guards are going to be put in the superior category. I don't really. I I would say you know could we put them in elite? Sure. Let's let's go ahead and put them in elite. They are an elite unit, so let's go ahead and move them up there because I mean it's not that the Austrians have a bad guard because it's on par with everyone else's guards. I mean, they get 50 accuracy, 55 reload. They get 9 attack, 13 charge bonus, 18 defense. And when you're talking Austria, uh, that's a pretty important statistics because the rest of their units are, uh, for their the bulk of their army, which is going to be the line infantry you're stuck with, is basically a, a militia tier unit. That's why we're going to place them where we do. Now, when we get to the next level of the of the military we're going to go to grenadiers and with the grenadiers the austrians actually have two now with uh the grenadiers i'm going to list them as a superior unit as grenadiers can be massively important for your army as far as the ability to throw grenades and of course with austria it gives you a unit that actually can hold up against the other nations in firepower as well which they have an average um grenadier which the prussians the russians and the spanish all have different uh tiers of their grenadiers which would mean that the spanish have the second um uh best accuracy of or actually tied with the uh, actually they're tied with all of them for the first so 
but um, the Spanish are going to have a little bit of. Uh, I don't really understand why they're different because it looks like they're all the same. It's the Russians that have a little bit better melee attack than all the others. Um, and they have a better charge bonus, but their defense is less and their, their accuracy, I mean, is, is, is less and their reloading skills less. Prussia has actually the best with reloading skill, but this isn't a discussion about them. The Austrians have basically an average grenadier. So we're going to list that as a superior unit because in the Austrian army, it's basically superior. Now, the, the Hungarian Grenadiers are a unit that is a special unit. It has a little bit better accuracy, but not much. And the reloading skill is a little bit better, but not much. And then its charge bonus and, and so forth are going to be a little bit different from the regular Grenadier. But it's not enough to really... Uh, I guess, push it into the elite category. So we're going to keep it in the superior um, branch. Okay. So now it's on to light infantry. Okay. With Austria, you get three. Now the basic one that you're going to start off with is the Jaeger. And I would just basically list that as a regular um, in light infantry. Because the reason is, is it's, there's nothing super special about the Jaeger. It's just like all the other um, light infantry that you're going to get. It, it's not going to give you anything else that you're going to get from any other nation. Now, when we get to the next unit we're going to discuss, which is the Grinzer, which I would say is an elite infantry unit. And the reason being is because this unit actually has a double barreled gun so firepower is immense with the grinzer now the accuracy is 55 which is really good for a um 90 range unit i think it is actually equal with the the ranger i mean i'm sorry the jaeger but the difference is is that you get a little bit better firepower with the reloading skill of 40 percent and that double barrel action and that is a big difference with this unit. Now, the morale is only seven. Again, this is why it's super important to keep your generals in your army builds because of Austria's low morale. Uh, but that is on par with other light infantry that you're going to get. So, finally, let's get to the last unit, which is the Windboucher Jaeger. And I know that I'm going to have a lot of people in the comments criticizing me for my pronunciations of things but it is what it is and this unit i'm actually going to list in the elite category and the reason being is because this is the fastest firing unit in the game actually the game was patched to take this unit from being 60 men down to 45 because it was so overpowered I uh, can't remember which patch that was, but this unit used to have 60 men, if memory serves right. And the game was patched to bring them down to 45 as far as your regular army size or large army size. If you're going to um, your um, ultra, it's 60 men. And that was nerfed in one of the patch taken down because their firepower is so fast they actually have more ammunition because they have less men they have 25 ammunition but the thing is is since they have a, a basically a wind rifle which is a, a rifle that uses i guess compressed air not unlike a pellet gun to shoot its uh, it's balls and it doesn't produce smoke or anything else so it doesn't give away the position it's a unit that actually walks hidden um, while walking so not much unlike the long rifles so that gives an advantage of stealth and the like I said the, the firepower of this unit any cab that tries to uh, charge it um, if it has um, 
open shots on it, it will destroy any cav that approaches it before it lands a uh, charge in most cases. Now, if terrain uh, favors the cav where it can approach it with uh, without being shot, then of course the cav can get to him and do damage. But the defense for a light infantry is not bad at all either with 10. And uh, the morale, again, is on par with others with 7. But where it stands above all is in the rate of fire that this unit displaces. Now, I will tell you that it fires so fast that you do need to keep an eye on your shots because you'll blow through ammo extremely fast with this unit. And if you're shooting into the sides of hills, you will blow through your ammo doing nothing. So it's very important to manage this unit very well. But anyways, here is my tier list for the units of Austria. I think that pretty much sums it up. If you like my list, agree with it, disagree with it, let me know what your differences are and what you think this list should be in the comments below. I greatly appreciate your support. As always, this is David with Fairmare's Rangers, and we will see you on the next one as we discuss the next army in tier listing, which would be the French. Stick around for that. That'll be up soon, and I appreciate you guys as always. Thank you again.